So lesson four, here we go. We're gonna identify functions and use function notation. So identify functions and use functional or function notation. Okay? All right. A relation is basically a pairing of two groups of numbers. So a relation is a pairing of input and output values. Input and output values. What was that last word say? Like I'm never talking to you. Notation. Okay, so for example, here's an input set like M, N, and negative 2. Here's an output set 8, 5, A, and B. So every input um, has at least one output, and every output has at least one input. Okay, so this, this 5 didn't appear out of anywhere. It had to have an input first. So that input was the N. Okay, and then this negative two goes to a couple different things, A and B, but every input is paired with at least one output and every output is paired with at least one input. That's what a relation is. This is not a function. A function is a type of, a specific type of relation. So this is called the domain which is the input values. This is the range, which is the output. But if you're thinking about a machine, um, if you put something in to a machine, you expect to get one result. If that machine is unpredictable and sometimes it goes to an A and sometimes it makes a B, then that is not a functional machine. It's not a functional relation. So a relation, every input goes to only one output, okay? So if you put in, you guys remember the nuggetizer? <laughs> if you put in a chicken, you're gonna get chicken nuggets every time. Now you could put in a pig and you still get chicken nuggets because that's how chicken nuggets are actually made. Um, you could put in, um, a car engine and you get chicken nuggets because that's how chicken nuggets are actually made. <laughs> okay, now that's still functional because you can predict the outcome every time. I know that if I put a chicken in the machine, it's gonna give me chicken nuggets. I also know that if I put a pig in the machine, it's gonna give me chicken nuggets and they're gonna taste just as yummy. Okay, that's how chicken nuggets are made. Live with it, deal with it, enjoy it, okay? <laughs> Not car engines, but um, it's not necessarily chicken. <laughs> Some, I mean, maybe <laughs> I'll send you a link to a video later that you can that you could see. But there, it's it's gruesome. Yes, yes, you can do the best. <laughs> Yeah, don't watch the nugetizer. I don't think you'll like that. So, all right. <laughs> okay. So, um, the uh, so the domain is what you put into it. The output is what you get out of it. Okay. The input value normally x is the independent variable. So this is this is what we represent as x usually in a in a linear equation uh, re represented by x and this is represented by y most of the time but not in functional notation and we'll talk about that in a second. So for example, you could see your 
values like this, x and y. Okay. Okay. Expressed, right? Represented. Okay. We'll Sorry, expressed. I'm a little rusty. That's okay. Yeah. So this is the independent variable. Okay. This is what has to go through the machine. This is what has to do the work. Um, and your y is dependent upon whatever the x is. So if you give the if you put an x into the machine, it's going to spit out a specific y. For example, if you put in a negative five, you might get a four. I don't know what that function does. I need more information. If you put in a negative two, maybe you get a positive two. If you put in a one, you get a zero. If you put in a zero, you get a negative two. Okay. Now I don't know what this equation is, what this machine does. But it doesn't look very consistent, does it? Like if I just thought about just adding something, well, I would have to add like nine to that, but I add four to that, and I'm subtracting one from that, I'm subtracting two from that, so it's not very consistent. It might take a minute to try to figure out if there is an equation that works with all four of those situations. But see how um, this is what you put in. So this Y value depends on what you put in. So this is the independent, value and this is the dependent because it's dependent on whatever x is De not depend dependent did i spell that wrong independent <laughs> it's hard to talk and write at the same time you've been doing it for a while i haven't done it in six months so i'm a little rusty okay so um, now we're going to identify functions. So I, to identify functions, there's rules that you have to go by, okay? So a function is a mapping between two sets, just like a relation, that associates with each element of the first set, the domain, a unique one and only one element of the second set, the range, okay? So a function is identified um, with every member of the domain, so every X maps or points to one and only one, one and only one member of the range or the Y. Okay, so tell me if A is a function. So a function, question mark? Here's example 1A. So here's the domain and the range, right? Put some elements there. Is this a function? Yes, because four only goes to three. Okay, do you see that? And three on the left side only goes to three. So this is a function. Yes, so four only goes to three. And three only goes to three. Okay, what about this? Um, so I'm gonna say one A two. If it was the other way around, three goes to both three and four. Is this a function? Some of you are shaking your head. It's not, because if you put three in the machine, sometimes it goes to three and some kind, sometimes it goes to four. Is that functional? No. So this is no. Okay, here's one B. Here's what one B looks like. X, Y chart. Seven goes to three. Five goes to three. Five goes to four. Is that a function? Yes. Wait, no. No. Okay, what tells me that it's not a function? Five goes to three and four. Yeah, so so far, right there, it was still a function, right? Mm -hmm. Because seven only goes to three, five only goes to three, but now we have five going to four, so no, 
because of this situation. Okay? So you need to be able to identify the domain, the range, and whether or not it's a function so far. Do you guys think you can do that? Yeah. Okay. All right. There's also a graphing method. So some, a lot of these times these are linear functions or, or nonlinear functions, but sometimes they can be graphed. So for example, here's a graph. And let's say it's like a sine wave. This is what a sine wave looks like. So for every x, remember these are the x values and these are the y values, right? Mm -hmm. So for every x, it only goes to one y. So let's look back at like negative five. See how negative five goes to like this number here, right? Negative four goes to zero, negative three goes to like that number there, whatever that is. Um, so you don't even have to know the numbers if you just have the graph because you see how every X value only has one Y value on the graph. So there is another way to test if something's a function. This is called the vertical line test. So if I drew a vertical line anywhere on the graph and it only touches one spot, only touches one spot on the line, on the graph, then it is a function. So this is called the vertical line test. But if you just look at the X and Y values, if you try to even guess what they are, like what, that's what we were doing, negative five is like going to negative one, negative four is going to zero, negative three is going to one or whatever but it's only going to one Y value, okay? So that makes sense. So that is called the vertical line test. So when you see that in your homework, that's what that is. So what about this graph? So this is a function, yes. What about this graph? And this is an example of something that's not a function. A circle. Because what happens when you draw a vertical line? See how it's touching in two spots? So that negative three is going to like positive three and it's going to negative three. So do you see that? So if I, if I tried to guess, then that would be three, negative three and three, but then this guy would be like negative three and negative three. So that negative three X goes to both three and negative three. So that's not a function, okay? So no. Okay, so you can see um, in example two, if you want to look there, we won't do these on the board. Let's see this graph here. See if I drew a Burke line anywhere on there, I'd probably hit a couple spots. So this is not a function. But this, if I drew a vertical line, it would still be a function because this graph says it stops there and there. It doesn't go all the way around. So it's still a function in this state. That's a function, it's a linear function. So, does that make sense, vertical line test? It's another way, if it's a graph, you can tell easily if it's a function, if you just kind of take anything, like a piece of paper, just make sure it's only touching one spot every time. Over here, it touches one spot on the very edge, but if there's just one area of the graph where it touches two spots, then it breaks the rules of the function, so it's not a function. Okay, so function notation is just really easy. Function notation, instead of y, it uses f of x. And we've dealt with f of x before, and it's not, it's kind of confusing because f of x looks like, um, Looks like it's multiplying something, but it's not. It's just a notation. Like x plus y equals x plus one. Function notation is just saying the function of x is to take that x and add one to it. 
So in basic math, we understood that F and right next to a parenthesis with an X in it, that means multiplication, right? That's not. When you see F of X, most of the time it's talking about functional notation, okay? And it doesn't even have to be F. It could be anything. So for example, uh, here's Y equals X minus five. It could be G of X equals X minus five. Most of the time it's F of X, but if it's dealing with more than one function, they'll use F, G, H, and so on, okay? But most of the time it starts with F, and if they need more letters, they'll just add one, so G of X and so on. Okay, so those, see how those parentheses are potentially confusing? Okay, and then you probably saw things like this. Well, what's F of two? You guys know what f of 2 is in this function right here? What would the... 3. So the function of 2 is, well, put 2 into the machine, and it's just going to add 1. 2 plus 1. That's confusing, especially for beginning algebra students and pre-algebra students, because they, they have this temptation, well, can't, don't we just have to solve for x? No, we're not solving for x, we're just evaluating it we're chugging it out plugging and chugging okay so um yeah we're we're almost done we just have one more uh example and then we'll call it good but since we didn't go over lesson five do we still have to do that as well? no well we don't have to do lesson yeah, five anyway we have Thursday. We're going to go over lesson five and six on Thursday, but I'm only assigning six on Thursday. So it's just three, four, and six this week. Okay? Uh, don't forget, you can earn free problem sets. How can you earn free problem sets? Correcting something, a mistake. I made at least two mistakes today, uh, math mistakes specifically. So if you would have caught that before me, don't be shy, but be nice, okay? What's another way to get a free problem set? Ask nicely. <laughs> yeah, if, if it, maybe it's your, if it's your birthday, I'll give you a free problem set. What about summer birthdays? Yeah, oh, yeah, summer well, birthdays, actually, like, yeah, one you're one out of luck. Yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah. I've been out of free school, problem set from two years now for my birthday, and I've been here for two years straight for my birthday. I know, I, this is a new rule. Can we do it for our half birthday? Because our birthday is July 8th, July 9th. Oh, yeah. Mine's like the last a bummer. Of school, so it's not in summer, but it's also useless. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, half yeah, just, you know, write me a nice letter. Lots Tell me how lots awesome I am. Yeah, lots of emojis. Yeah, lots of emojis. Okay, um, but what was I saying? Oh, what's the other way to get a free problem set? I think, or no, I thought that was it. it. No, nope, there's one more. This is the rule that you forgot first Oh, year. yeah. Uh, A's on tests. A's on tests. 90 I or above. I never had that. 90s or above, really? you can turn that in for a free problem set. I got a test last year and well, you, I even got a free problem set. You turn in the test and you write yeah. this is so a Yeah, so you get... <laughs> have you never done that? <laughs> no! <laughs> See, this is what happens when you don't pay attention, attention in class. Okay. I, I go over that every year, but whatever. That's okay. Problems, that means you don't I don't want to it. Yeah, so if you get an A on your test, you can turn that test back in and say, I would like to cash this in as a free problem. <gasps> I thought you meant just like okay. one problem. Can I cash my no, response from last year? <laughs> What's that? Can I cash my no. response from last year? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so here's the last example that we're going to do, and then we're going to call it good. This is example three. In functional notation. So um, they might give you two, like if h of x equals 4x minus 3 and p of x equals x squared minus 3x. So this is two different functions, right? So x squared minus 3x. Um, here's what I want to do. I want to find... P of negative 3. That's it. That's all I want you to do. So I just wasted my life doing what? Not 
math. Don't math. say math. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I didn't really have to give you this, right? Sure. But um, this is just, this is also teaching you um, which function to plug it into. <laughs> so that one is just useless? What's yep. the so now we're going to plug it into <laughs> the P function. An H or something. Not the H yeah. function. So if it says find H of something, yeah. Then, yeah. So it says find P of something. What do you do with that negative three? Plug it in. Plug it in to where? The X. Yes. X. So you can ignore that. So I would just, uh, to make it confuse, make it less confusing, just ignore that. And so now I'm going to say negative three. This is what I want to square, not negative three squared. It's negative three squared. Okay. See the difference? That's what we're squaring. And then we're subtracting three minus. Okay. Shouldn't there be no pause in the second? Negative three squared, not negative three squared. I don't know, it's hard well, to pause. Isn't the three like right next to the square? Either yeah, way? but negative three kind of goes together. Negative three is a, is, right. a, is a thing. Yeah, I get the pause between negative and three, but then between three and squared, there shouldn't be any pause there, right? What? Um, well, th if it was like this, it would be negative three squared. Right. Okay, so that's why I purposely don't put a pause there. Yeah. But if it's negative three squared, so negative three is something we had to do first, and then we moved on to squared. So that's why there's a pause. Okay. Okay. But, you know, pause, no pause, it's, it's your choice. Okay, so remember, this is positive nine minus a negative nine. So remember, that's plus positive 9, which is 18. Okay? You guys good? Yeah. That's basically it for 3 and 4. What about the, the PX? What about, like... This H of X here? No, like... Oh, yeah. See, this is where it's confusing. This is where, like, well, what do you do with that? Don't do anything. Oh, okay. No, the, this is saying, if I read this in English, it would say... The function of x and um, function p okay. is to Got square it. x and then subtract three times that x. Okay? Good question. Don't be confused by that.